Year end could possibly be the most important time of the year to reach out to your donor base with funding opportunities. Too many nonprofit leaders either neglect to ask or ask incorrectly. Well, today I'm going to show you how to implement the perfect year end appeal strategy. And this might be the key to ending your year fully funded. Let's get started. In 2021, I saw a dip in giving to the personal support account for my wife and I that funds our salary and benefits, allowing us to work for our current nonprofit. By about September, it was apparent that I needed to have a large infusion of funds into that account if we hoped to cover the cost of the special expenses, medical and increased insurance premiums, etc., that had and were going to occur by year end. I determined that the need could get as high as $50,000, but at a minimum, I would need to raise $30,000. I knew a match would be the best way to motivate people to accelerate giving, so I sought to find three to five current partners who gave $5,000 each to be the lead gifts and who would match the giving from the rest of our mailing list. Within about 10 days, I had five lead commitments of $5,000 or more, and I sent out a letter addressing our efforts and needs for the coming year. In addition, I mentioned the matching gift opportunity. I called all our critical few partners and even visited a few partners in person. I used December 31 as the deadline and used my wife's atypical medical needs as the catalyst to get people to respond quickly. In the end, 62 couples responded to the opportunity and saw our need met completely by the deadline. Over the years, I've done end of the year asks that produce little, especially in the early years. But when I learned to do a campaign correctly, it changed everything. On average, 50% of the total income to most nonprofit organizations comes in the last three months of the year. 31% in December and 12 in the last three days. Those are amazing statistics that validate the critical nature of this time of the year. That's why incorporating an effective year-end strategy is so important. Whether you should employ a year-end strategy really is not the question. It's not an option. It's how you choose to do the strategy that really matters. And today I'm going to share with you the four steps to the perfect year-end strategy. Step number one, identify the who. It's critical before venturing into any appeal campaign that you determine who should be asked. Your answer might be everyone on your donor file, or it might be just a specific group of donors. Whichever, it's important to have a plan for all groups. For many organizations, capabilities, that staff and budget, determine who is asked. Typically, your donor file is segmented into three categories, mass, middle, and major slash mega donors. This mix might also include non-donors, but that adds another level of complexity to the mix. Let's assume you're just working with current donors or those who have given at a largest single gift in the last three years. Mass donors include anyone who's given a large single gift of $1 to 999. Middle donors include anyone who's given a large single gift of 1000 to 499, and major mega donors are usually 5000 and above. Some large nonprofits make that middle major break at 10,000 or 25,000 and separate mega donors as above that line. If you have a smaller organization don't have the capabilities to incorporate a three-segment approach, just set aside your critical few. That's the 20% of the donors who give 80% of the income and target those individuals for year-end appeals. Step number two, implement the strategy. If you are able to implement this three-segment approach, you'll be appealing to the donors in those segments in different ways with each way leading to increased levels of personalization. 
The mass segment will include a two-page letter front and back with a dear friend salutation in dollar categories that match the levels similar to their largest single gift. Most often, that will be a gift range of $100, $250, or even $500. The middle segment will include a two-page letter, but that letter will be two separate pieces of paper, not front and back. It will include a personalized salutation such as Dear John and Mary or Dear Mr. and Mrs. Jones in dollar categories of $1,000, $2,500, or even $5,000. But that letter will be followed up with a phone call starting approximately 72 hours after the letter is sent. The fact that you'll be calling the individual may or not be mentioned in the body of the letter depending on your workload and if you'll be able to call them. Please know that a call will increase your positive response rate from 2 to 3% with a letter alone to 25 to 30%. The call will go something like this. Hello, Mr. Jones. Did you get the letter I sent recently regarding our XYZ project? I wanted to find out how much you'd be able to give to this exciting opportunity. Have you decided on an amount? The major segment will also include a two-page letter as two separate pieces and includes a personalized salutation. At a minimum, that person should receive a phone call, and if possible, you should try to meet with that person face-to-face. Whereas a phone call will yield a 25 to 30 percent positive response to your appeal, a personal appointment will increase the positive response to 50 percent or higher. Step number three, incorporate a lead gift. As I've stated countless times in these videos, offering a matching gift opportunity in my appeals has been a game changer since 2005. Any matching gift effort begins with one or more lead gifts. Those individuals interested in matching the gifts given during your campaign. It's best to start with an amount that you hope to raise overall with the campaign, then set out to attain 50% of that in lead commitments. For example, if your total goal is $100,000 and you hope to get 50 in lead commitments, that would break down to 5 commitments of $10,000 or 10 commitments of $5,000 or a variety of gifts leading to $50,000. You'd want to craft a list of five to 10 largest current donors and call or meet with each to get the commitments to match every gift of a set amount during the campaign. If you've never done a matching gift campaign before, watch this video to find out more in detail. I would strongly encourage you to use a minimum amount to qualify for the match to motivate individuals to stretch themselves in their giving. A very reasonable uh, minimum amount to qualify for the match is a single gift of $1,200 or $100 a month. We're a highly competitive society and as such, we strive to meet people's expectations and even to stretch to reach a bar that might normally be higher than expected. Step number four, invest in the relationship. It's important that you don't end your campaign when the partner gives a gift. Look for ways to invest in the relationship by immediately thanking them for their gift. A computer-generated or handwritten note or card should go out the door in 24 hours. It's strongly recommended that you go old school and handwrite a note versus simply sending an email or text. People still appreciate handwritten communication. With larger gifts over 5000 or to the critical few, be sure to call to thank the person in addition to sending a thank you note. In rare circumstances, usually depending on the relationship or size of the gift, you might meet with a person to thank them for their gift. Other ways to invest in the relationship include a one-page report as to how their money was used and include photos and quotes for one or more individuals whose life was changed due to their gift. Newsletters and insider letters on monarch-sized sheets of paper are also good ways to report back on the outcomes of their gift or investment. The perfect year-end appeal strategy can be an effective part of your year-end fundraising plan if you follow the four-step process outlined in this video. Identify the who, implement the strategy, incorporate a lead gift, and invest in the relationship. 
Year end is probably the most fruitful time of the year for nonprofit organizations, and it can be for your organization as well. I hope you found this video and the contents helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add, add a comment below, letting me and this community know your thoughts on these. If you feel differently about what determines a good project, or if I missed any element, please share that with me in the comment section so that it can help our entire community get better. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends or colleagues. There's no cost to you. We're building a movement through a community of life changers, and it's my desire that by subscribing, you'll learn principles and practices that help you secure the resources necessary to accomplish your mission and change the world. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. We're also adding valuable content to our Life Changers Facebook group, so go out there to become a member as well. You can find the link in the description below. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before. Change some lives and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.